What up, Iron Hulks? What are you doing out to? Why were they getting out? I have a perfect system. They must be swimming around the walls. This is ridiculous. I demand a refund. YouTube! Hello, it is me, your boy. What's up, guys? It's the Dapper Dove, and we're back with another episode in this Hardcore Let's Play series. Hope you guys have been enjoying this series thus far. We discovered a mine shaft recently, and we just explored it. Every nook and cranny and crevice and spawner. Eh, would you look at that? Just look at it. Look at us. Who'd have thought? Not me. We're gonna build this really quick. This is not gonna be a super big tutorial. I'll kind of just cover the basics. I learned how to make my cave spider XP grinder from Kid Alu. There'll be a link to the video that I, I learned this from. So I'm just gonna kind of cover the, the quick basics, but I loved his build. I've used it in several worlds and it is extremely effective at getting as much XP as possible. It's also a great way to get a ton of string, which you can then trade with fishermen's for emeralds because we're getting to that point. We're getting to the point in the series where we're gonna start enchanting things. We're gonna need to do a lot of trading in order to get the enchantments we want with the librarians. So we can kind of manipulate that a little bit. But in this episode, we are going to quickly make this and then we're gonna move on to something I have been dying to do. That is build a starter home. We do not have a base. Really the base is kind of just my my mine right now, like the work area of my mine shaft. But I do want to build something up nearby the village, a little home for ourselves. So I'm excited. And uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, please do leave a like. And if you're new to the series, consider subscribing. If you guys would like to hang out with me live, I stream every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday over on twitch.tv slash the dapper duff. Come by in the chat, hang out with me. But let's get right into the video. Okay. You found yourself a nice cave spider spawner. It's freaking sick. You're stoked. This is great. So here's a little thing. I found this in, you know, a mine shaft, which I've cleared out. It used to look like that. And I cut out all the wood and then I've cleared this out. And so the most effective way to turn the cave spider into an XP grinder, the first step is to actually just clear out this room. And so what we've done is we've actually gone four blocks on all the sides of the actual spawner itself. So we're four blocks this way, four blocks that way, four blocks this way, and four blocks on the opposite side. And then as far as north and south, above and below it, we are three blocks high, and then we are three blocks below. So that's basically it. Three below, three high, four all the way around. Carve that out. Make sure anything like around it is well lit. Otherwise, you could have spiders spawning up here, for instance, if it's not perfectly set up, and that will be a problem and annoy you because you're trying to get as many spiders to go to the kill chase as possible. And so you wanna make sure it is well lit in the area surrounding while this room is gonna be completely dark by the time that we are done with it. So let's talk about what we need to do and what supplies we're going to need. This is actually an old mine shaft. See, check it out, check it out. So everything in this chest is what we're going to need for this build. Very simple, very straightforward. Um, not a very expensive build whatsoever. We are going to need three hoppers. We're gonna need three chests, three walls. These can be cobble walls, stone brick walls, whatever you wanna use. We're gonna need some slabs. We need three trap doors. You only need three slabs, by the way. And then three fence gates, two buckets of water so you can make an infinite water source like I've done here. And um, iron bars and oak signs and then ladders just make things a little bit easier. Of course, torches and building blocks are gonna be useful. So let's go ahead and get this stuff in our inventory. So we did the nine by nine room. So it is nine by nine by nine. And then once it's nine by nine by nine, you're gonna pick a side. Oh, Duke is here. You're going to pick a wall. The wall we've chosen is this one. And you're gonna go out actually one more block. So it becomes a nine by nine by nine by, or sorry, a nine by nine by nine by 10 or a 10 by 10 by nine by nine. Does that make sense? This length is 10, this length is 10. And then you're going to punch out these first two um, rows here. And then you're gonna create a nice little cavity here. This is where eventually all these spiders are going to flow into this area. So again, 10 blocks wide, 10 blocks wide, and then nine blocks wide, nine blocks wide. We cool, we cool. We're only doing that to one side here. So then we create a nice little cavern. This is gonna be the work area. This is where the spiders will flow. We'll take our fence gates and we will place them one block in from the edge here. And we will open those all up. And then we're going to move over here. We're gonna skip a block. We're gonna punch this out. Okay, sweet. And then, um, actually we could leave these. This might be easier for, for reference for you. We're gonna take our chests, come on the other side. We'll place our, oops, almost forgot something here. We don't want the chests to be connected, or at least it doesn't matter if they are. I like them to be separate. 
as well. I kind of just like the look of it a little bit more. You skip a block, punch out a hole of three right there, and then we're going to take our hoppers. We're going to shift click to place the hoppers into the back of the chest. Now the rest of this could all be cleared out. This is where you're gonna stand and actually like kill your spiders in order to grab that XP. So that's all cleared out. We've got just to review, skip a space, our fences all open, skip our gate, excuse me, skip a space. We've got uh, an open spot here with our hoppers and going into our chests. That is all squared away. We can go ahead and take our brick walls we're going to place them. Eh. Eh. There we go. Whew. Um, and then we are stuck. Sick. We're stuck. Ah! Get ah! <laughs> the shift click to get over it. <laughs> um, don't worry, your spiders aren't going to be able to do that because now we're going to take our building block. Doesn't matter what you're using. If you want this to be aesthetic and all the same blocks, cool, cool, cool. But we're gonna above our chests, fill that in. And then we're gonna take our iron trap doors and we're going to, oh, you know what we did? We shouldn't have put these down just yet because we need to be able to place our iron trap doors right here. And this is really the big secret of the build. I love this design. It makes it super easy. Um, but then once we place our slabs on top of the hoppers by shift clicking, the spiders can fit through a block if it is half a block and that trap door makes it just under that half a block, which keeps them all trapped right here, allows you to stay safe. Anyways, back to this. Go ahead and place these. Eh, there we go. The reason for the fences here is because um, for some reason this pushes all of the XP orbs over the slab. That way there's no drops basically, or virtually no drops. And then this is basically all donezo right here. We're gonna take out these torches real quick and use our building block to just fill this area in so the spiders can't go up. Voila, and that's the look that we're trying to achieve here. Now, before we place our water sources, just to make it easier for ourselves, make sure that spiders don't climb these walls and just stay trapped in here instead of going down the chute. We're going to take iron bars and we're going to go to the top here. And then we're gonna take oak signs and we're just going to place them on these iron bars. And this prevents the spiders from climbing the wall and gives you the most efficient XP grinder. Sweet, super easy, okay? Um, the last thing we're going to do, we're gonna take out this block here, this row, and we're gonna replace it with iron bars. This makes it a little bit shorter and gives the flow of the water a little bit of a uh, bit of a speed boost. Also, when this is a full block, sometimes you'll have spiders that kind of get stuck in between the sign and the block. Again, it's all about efficiency in this build. Now, we're going to take our water source. Since we're in hardcore, we're gonna have to go back several times to put our water sources here, but we're going to cover this entire back wall with water, and then we're going to cover this corner with water and this corner with water. Voila, pretty simple. Voila. All right, so we've covered the entire back wall here with water. We've also placed water sources in this corner and in this corner. I forgot to put water in here, so I needed to open this back up again. And on the other side of this oak fence, I've already placed one there. We also need to place water sources here as well. And I believe we're already technically good, but now it's a perfect even level. So this will bring the spiders in and then this will push them the rest of the way to you. So now we can go ahead and fill this back in. Voila, and then iron bar and where's that last sign? Voila, bye bye. Now the build is actually complete. Let me hop up here real quick. By the way, make ladders, make yourself a little hole here so you can get out. Otherwise you're gonna trap yourself with a bunch of cave spiders and uh, in survival or hardcore, that is scary, okay? So anyway, spiders will spawn in this room when it is completely dark, it will flow down in here and then be forced down into the middle where they go. Bye bye. Um, what we're gonna do now is very, very carefully, we're gonna go around and break all the torches so that it starts to get dark. And we do need to be extremely careful with this because spiders will start spawning pretty much immediately. Um, I am gonna break that top one and place a slab on top of it so that spiders do not spawn on the top there. So they cannot spawn on that half block. And that is it, that's the build. So let's go very carefully and break all of these. We're gonna get our, our shield out just in case. So we're gonna start with the most dangerous side of this, which you do not wanna be on is this side because this is where the spiders are gonna flow. So we'll start breaking these torches. We're gonna be somewhat quick about this. Okay, might start seeing them spawn here. So we're gonna head towards the back. Yep, there's uh, there's one right there. Great, great. And all the torches are busted in here. Let's get up the ladder. Ah 
Sweet. Okay. And now once we block this off, it'll be completely dark in here. Look at that. And we'll get like four or five spiders per thing. And they just fall right inside there. Now, every time you come close to this block, they will start spawning. And I'm going to break these ladders because we're not going to have any need to come back in here. <laughs> we done did it, boys. Ta-da. Okay, great. Now let's head inside to the kill chamber. This is what it looks like essentially. Now the lighting in here will actually shine through all the way over there, but we don't want it to be dark in here. So I recommend a couple different things um, to still light the area, um, but make it not so negatively impactful. That helps minimize the light carryover. So now you can just stand here. It's kind of like a cool AFK thing. I do this sometimes when I'm like at work or whatever. And, um, or if I've just gone and used all of my tools, you can just come here, hang out. This will fill up with spiders and you can just smack them to your heart's content. We'll give these things a few good smacks. I have no enchantments on this diamond sword, but you can see the XP just flows gently, perfectly over to me. Super easy. Okay, let's go build a base. <laughs> oh, I'm so pumped. I've been wanting to do this. And if I'm perfectly honest with you right now in this in this moment, I have no idea what we're about to do. I'm going to wing it. I think we're going to use a lot of oak because I stripped this mine down here. So check this out. Woo! I just depleted this mine. Look at all the string I've gotten from killing cave spiders. By the way, we also have a zombie spawner that we're going to turn into a grinder also. We're sitting pretty here after all this mine. And we've got 60 diamonds currently, all these tools. So I've decided we're going to be using spruce in this build. Spruce and oak and the oak we are set let's go up to the nearby spruce forest and um just grab a ton of stacks so let's look to gather as many spruce logs as we can and i'll see you guys in a second we got plenty of spruce i even brought back some saplings so i can grow some more we've got basically a stack and a half and i found some sugar cane which took me on a little bit of a detour around the nearby mountain but it's kind of cool i haven't really explored any of this area i'm saving that for a future episode we will take the map out and we'll just we'll just go see there's the bee bees are so cool also discovered we have a a swamp biome nearby which is awesome because green slime so i'm excited Ooh, duke is here is oh duke duke pulled my hand right off the mouse as we discovered a witch's hut duke look there's a witch's hut look at his handsome boy oh 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 Love you, bud. The thing about witches' huts is like, I'm gonna kill a witch to get like maybe a glass bottle and some redstone. So is how worth it really is it? I'm just gonna leave her, I'm gonna leave her be for now. Okay, let's go build this house. I think we're gonna build it over in this area. Okay, I'm gonna put the house, let's see. I'm gonna put the house like right here. Let's see, no, I'm gonna put it up here because I want it to be closer to the stuff that I'm actually doing. So we're gonna put it. Yeah, let's put it right here. We're gonna do it. Ah, the sweet, refreshing taste of Dr. Pepper. You gotta build a house and still keep your video interesting and short and concise and sweet. Try the taste of Dr. Pepper. So let's make an outline. First step to building a house is to make an outline. So we're gonna make our house facing the village. Oh, the sun, don't look at it directly. It's going down, facing the village. And this, this is a starter house. I don't want this to be like some crazy house. I just want this to be a place where I can have enough storage and some of my other stuff that I wanna use like um, building blocks. Okay, let's go build the house now. Holy smokes, who put that there? Woo! Ooh, that's a big tree right there. That's what I like to see. Oh, look, and the, the soil actually changed. Building tip number one, it is always best to use odd numbers unless you like double doors. It just creates a more like symmetrical look if you can use odd numbers. So typical builds will be in like a seven by seven or a nine by nine or some combination of the two. I'm just gonna mark this out. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's our, this is like the, gonna be the, the kind of the front seven by seven, just a perfect square for a moment. Now that you've got the initial outline, now this is where you can kind of have a little bit of fun with it, maybe break things up and add secondary rooms um, or a front porch, whatever really that you want to do in this home. I'm going to make a little porch and now see that the porch is five wide. So we still got that odd number. So that way it still, you know, it looks center. The door will be centered here. And then we can put a nice window centered here as well. So super easy, very simple house concept. First things first, we're gonna go too high. So on the edge of the build, we're gonna go too high there. We're just gonna kind of frame it out with the logs and this is all going to be raised one level we're going to create for this patio look sort of a like a porch kind of feel so actually going to go upside down stair here and then we're going to do a normal stair and a normal stair and then over here we're going to do an upside down stair and an upside down stair that gives us like this this feel of actual like porch 
and then we can fill it in with the slabs. Voila. To save material in hardcore, we're actually gonna use slabs. On the outside here, we're going to go with full planks. Boom, baby. <laughs> we got two, we got two. Okay, so now we've got our actual floor in place. So we're gonna take our logs, we're gonna go up a bit here. So. We need to go up one, two, and three, and yeet! That was close. One, two, and three. Ah! Oh, that was a just. <laughs> um, now we can take our spruce planks and we start to fill in these walls. Let's do two windows here. So we're gonna fill this part in. Perfect. And on this side, since we've got a bigger view, we're actually gonna do a nice little three window here. And then on the back here, we'll do the two window just like that. Love to see it, love to see it. Now let's worry about the roof. So we're going to extend out. Then we're gonna go upside down stair, stair, upside down stair. We're gonna actually gonna go up and then we're gonna do a stair, upside down stair. Then should we go one? Okay, let's go repeat on the other side and see where we meet in the middle. Upside down stair, stair, upside down stair, blank, stair, upside down stair, blank again, stair, blank again, stair, and then we're gonna take our log. We're gonna go this way. All right, let's go see how that looks. Ah, pretty cool. Kind of a churchy, but whatever. Take me to church. Let's go mirror that on the other side. Nice, and now we can kind of start to fill this in. I like how I've given you guys like building tip number one and I've followed it up with no tips. Tip number two, roof lines. <laughs> don't be afraid to break up the roof lines like I did. You don't have to just go stare all the way up, just, you know, back and forth, back and forth, like a perfect triangle. Not every roof looks like that. And you can achieve a different look and a feel by doing it like this rather than making all the roofs look like that. So this breaks it up, kind of gives it a different aesthetic. Dude, look at this freaking forest that I've planted. Ugh, I'm stoked. Now we are getting somewhere. And then again, building tip number three here. Don't be afraid to break up the colors of the wood. We don't need to use just one single type of wood. Um, this again adds more dimension to the, the roof, especially to the shape if it looks a little different and using the spruce to kind of frame that middle part definitely gives it a different feel as well. So this is really starting to come together well. We need to kind of cross beam this out, get some windows in, and then we can focus on the interior. Okay, yeah, we are in a pretty good place now so i have finished pretty much the entire exterior of the build i don't super love the front of this maybe i'll like it better when i put the glass in but uh the deck is completed we put some railings in here and um the, the front is all completely filled in as we go inside i don't know if the bed's gonna stay there but for now it is um and then we've got slab down here for some lighting and this looks pretty good now we just gotta fill it in with some glass which is currently baking so let's go to bed real quick make it daytime and then we'll throw some glass on this i think i'm gonna dye it this light gray color kind of subtle um oh look at that i love that not perfectly clear not actual gray but just a light gray gives it some nice contrast kind of goes well with this whole thing look at that um another tip here for you guys use stairs to do your windows otherwise you'll have that blocky feel and if you're deciding to do glass panes then you'll have this gap because the pane will sit right in the middle of the block so if you do stairs kind of lines up perfectly there it gives a little dimension to the windows it makes them look a little bit better i'm thinking what's missing here is that the top is framed i think that's why it's looking wonky to me whereas the bottom isn't so what i'm gonna do is replace these bottom planks with the exact same spruce log. I think that's gonna give me the look that I'm after. Oh yeah, that is uh, much, much better. To fill in this top little T here, we used stripped spruce and stripped oak logs. And so I'm gonna continue this all the way around. Okay, this is basically the final build. I think I'm gonna put a little patio on the top here, maybe using some campfires to make a nice little awning. I'm going to fill the ceiling with storage right here. So it's kind of a clever way to save space in a small build like the one that we have. So I'll show you what I mean here. We'll make a bunch of chests and we can just come up here and place them and now we can just come in and access the chest from the bottom i mean it's not necessarily for aesthetics but it saves a lot of room down here where i don't need to have like a bunch of chests ruining this look of the windows and the full effect that we're trying to get out of this i'll detail the interior a little bit as the series goes on but for me in a hardcore world i focus on function at first this was even going a little bit overboard for a uh, our first world build but i think we're gonna stick to this kind of style throughout once i remodel the village 
as we create this like seaside coastal town. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. If you guys have any feedback or any building tips, I'd love to hear it down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Our Hardcore Let's Play series is live on the channel every Monday and every Friday. And if you'd like to come hang out with me live in the stream, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, twitch.tv slash the dapper duff, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I hope you guys enjoyed the build. Let me give you the cinematic.